Eric Bloodaxe. Everybody knows exactly who I am. And on this beautiful day, we have the setting of Azalea Park around us in Levittown. And if anyone knows my history with Azalea Park, this is not only the place that when I was in sixth grade, I would um, throw M80s and bottles and rocks at police and smash fucking rocks off cops' faces when I was six, in sixth and seventh and eighth grade, but it's also where I got my throat slashed when I was 17 fighting with a bunch of kids right over here, coincidentally, which now has, they've taken out the dirt um, and they put down, um, I don't know what the fuck this is, AstroTurf? But this was the field of great slaughter, so to speak, the night where I fought a multitude of people. And um, they cut me up and chopped my ear off and I broke them up real bad. And their leader ended up getting dragged away and the pigs ended up coming and trying to fucking arrest me. And it was crazy. So I figured this is a good area um, to discuss combat sports and bare knuckle boxing and fighting. I mean, all the other people would do it in the gym with like gay fucking Buddhist flags behind them and all that bullshit. We're not, we're not going to do that. We're going to have the Levittown Water Tower. If we could point and we could look at the Levittown Water Tower, that would be nice because that's the, ta the beacon of freedom we used to call it when we would throw fucking M80s and bottles at the pigs in 6th and 7th grade. They would chase us all throughout here and we would come back around and rain bombs down in their car like Palestinian freedom fighters and we would know if we could see the beacon of freedom we could get away because of all the woods. Perpetual violence has followed in this park ever since when I was growing up so I'm pleased to be here to discuss my career of violence now. <laughs> yes. In bare knuckle boxing there's a company called UB Bed Bare Knuckle Boxing over in England. It is the only legal bare knuckle event in the world. Legal in the sense that it has weight classes which I'll get into in a minute. It has doctors on staff. It's a legitimate promotion. It's not a bunch of hillbillies fighting in their backyard like you see here in America giving each other hepatitis C. This is as legitimate as a boxing event as you can have at Madison Square Garden. They have over in England. Same kind of concept. I saw a Vice documentary on bare knuckle boxing in England. I had contacted the promoter because that's what I do. If there's a fight, I'm gonna find where to go and fight. And we had spoke and he had told me about how to get my passport in order um, and everything. And after about a year of that, I finally got around to doing it. I then um, went over there and I fought for them. And that's how I got involved with the whole bare knuckle scene. And I love it over there. Nice. Currently, I've only been fighting bare knuckle because in New York, combat sports is completely screwed ever since that MMA bill was passed. You can't have any pro fights, really. The cards that had five or six pro fights now have one, and they only book the fighters who can sell a certain number of tickets. I don't sell a lot of tickets, so I can't commit to selling 30 or 40 tickets, you know, to go fight. So um, currently, I'm only fighting in England, bare knuckle out there are great. It's a whole different culture compared to the fight sports here. You see that from the fighters, first um, the fighters to the fans, they're very respectful. So you can have somebody's fans there for another guy you're fighting and they'll be cheering for their people to win but the moment you get out of the um, ring everybody's offering to buy you drinks, buy you food. I haven't had one issue in person with anybody in England. Um, there's people online, and there'll always be people online who talk about my success or my failures as if I lost a fight or I didn't do this right or I did this right, but everybody on, to, to my face is polite. Here in New York, people will talk shit and then run behind the promoter and hide behind the five security guards that promoter has so I don't punch him in the fucking face. But in England, one of the biggest things you'll hear, when you'll see these fights, people get their heads knocked off, people get knocked out. The moment they get out of the ring, the other guys, friends and family and team are buying them drinks and food telling them good job. It's a different mentality. You have to figure the England, the English have been fighting for centuries. That's where like knights come from and stuff like that. So it's in their culture, literally, to fight. I mean, they love to fight. I love the culture out there and I love the um, promotion. Promotions run fantastically. All right, so right now, um, the I fought Nathan Leeson, who mm -hmm. is a, a boxer out there with like 50 plus fights. We fought a five round bare knuckle fight for my first one. He's an undefeated bare knuckle boxer and he ended up winning on points. It went the full five rounds. I knocked him down in the second round and then I wasn't able to capitalize, so that was a loss by a decision. Then I fought the giant monster, Little John, Peter Radford, all six foot six, six foot seven of him. Little John? Um, yeah, I call him Little John. It's deceptive because he's about as fucking tall as the, tree. the trees <laughs> and he's, he's a heavy hitter. Um, I, I was able to get through with him and I pulled off a victory. I dropped him in the second and then I just fought a controversial fight I'll get into it with a guy named Sean George, the outlaw from Wales. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, Sean George is a kickboxer like me, so we're the only two kickboxers this promotion has. Right. And we both walk out with masks on. We fought, 
he won, so right now I'm considered um, one win, two losses, but a lot of people think it's a draw. My personal opinion on the fight is I cut 27 pounds for that fight in a week. It's the same day weigh-in. I'm not making any excuses. Sean outworked me. If Sean hit me more, if he did, we could look at the footage, it's because he threw more punches. But I believe my punches landed crisper mm -hmm. and more solid. Um, none of us got hurt. None of us got banged up. Our faces looked like they did before we came out. I think his, I swelled his eyes shut a little more than he gave me a black eye and I swelled his shut. Um, but yeah, that was that. I personally count the fight as a draw because of what people were saying after. And from the footage I saw, I thought I won the second round. I mean, the first round. Sean won the second round. And the third round, I believe, was a toss-up due to some situation that happened. But we got a rematch in the um, making. So I count my record as 1-1-1 one, one, and one because if you look at these bare knuckle fights, people are getting knocked out and butchered. Sean came out untouched. I came out untouched. It was kind of like a very cautious jab fest. All we did was throw jabs at each other. Whereas the Little John fight was pretty barbaric and me and Nathan just stood in front of each other and knocked each other's faces in with no gloves on for um, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. The weight classes right now are by stone. This is something the cowardly little fucking assholes in New York won't understand. You see in New York, people cry about one pound, two pound. Right. You get all these guys who claim to be the biggest and the baddest and all they do is bitch and moan. Oh, he was six ounces over. I don't want to fight him. Fuck you. In England, it's 15 pounds. One stone is 15 pounds. That means if you're 168 pounds and I'm 182 pounds, we fight. You can be 168, I can be 182. Bang, we fight. That's a stone. You can be 175, I can be 180. I can be 168, we fight. People over in England don't whine and cry about technicalities. I've seen people fight that agree to three stone heavier. It's 15, 30, and plus. Not saying on that event, but just in general, they'll fight, they don't care. In America, you have people whine at one pound allowance. Given it's a day before weigh-in, so you can bring your weight down. This is same day of weigh-in, but it is what it is. I cut weight for this past fight. I dropped 27 pounds in a week. The day before, I drank no water, I ate no food. And the day of, I drank no water, I ate no food. Until three o'clock in the afternoon, we did our weigh-in, and then I ate some jelly donuts. Uh, what gives you the motivation to get into the, into fighting in general, you Nature. know? Anger, rage. If, if this was 7,000 years ago, I'd be sailing around on a ship, invading all these houses you see around here. I'd be burning them. I'd be taking out all the fucking possessions that I wanted, and I'd be slaughtering and putting people's fucking heads on poles. I'm a conqueror, and I'm a warlord. It doesn't matter how many fights I've had. It doesn't matter how many fights I've won. It doesn't matter how many fights I've lost. I've only been knocked out once in 60 amateur and professional fights. That's my current record, is that out of 60 fights, counting my amateur, plus pro, I've only been knocked out once. TKO'd once, but only knocked out once. Um, and I've beat a lot of fucking people from a lot of gyms that have fucked me off and bloodied them up. But that's my whole thing getting into fighting, is hatred, rage, anger. I have to try to control myself every day not to murder random men and women that I see. I have a very, very bad temper. I do not get along well with fucking society and others. So I stay away from everything because I want to kill everything. I want to fucking murder people. Yeah, when we were discussing about the difference between the English fight scene and the American fight scene, the other thing is over in England, people will the, the, the people who score the card, the judges, will show you and they'll discuss it with you. Here, they're a bunch of fucking cowards. It's like the witness protection program. The WKA is garbage. I don't give a fuck if Brian Crenshaw gets annoyed at that. He doesn't like me anyway. I'm not a fan of him. Their events suck. I mean, the promoters put on good events, the fighters put on good events, but the, the, but the sanctioning body itself is trash. How many times did they rob people on things that, I mean, people put hard work and effort into it. They just robbed my fighter past weekend. And I'm the first one to tell somebody if you're losing a fight. Whether you train with me, um, or you're my friend or you're my girlfriend, if I tell you, if you're losing a fight and you're getting your ass beat, I'm gonna tell you, you're getting beat up, go out and fucking fight. Because if you, if you quit, you're nothing. But if you fight, you know, you at least you go down fighting. But the WK is fucking garbage. It's nothing but a bunch of fucking jokes that fucking run gyms that I've fought and banged heads with. And then they see me, and they see somebody I'm affiliated with, like a student of mine, fighting. And then they'll try to fucking rob them because they're too scared to say something to me. In closing, I'll see everyone back in uh, England, back in January. Fuck Amanda and Sean Snitch from Warrington. Fuck everybody from Warrington. That place is the most fucking miserable place in all of England. And fuck everybody in Long Island I don't train with. Um, if you see me and you want to fucking shake my hand, that's fine. If you want to punch me in the face, that's fine. I don't care. That's basically it.
back to fighting every fucking style I can get on any promotion show, kickboxing, boxing, bare knuckle boxing, MMA, whatever. And that's all. Fucking die. NYC Fight Life TV. Eric Bloodaxe Olsen. See you guys next time.